بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم بیک ٹو مشین لرننگ ان دا لاسٹ کپل اف ویڈیوز وی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ ریگریشن پرابلمز وی فوکسڈ آن لینیئر ریگریشن اینڈ پولینومیل ریگریشن فار ایچ اف دیز پرابلمز وی فارمولیٹڈ مینیمائزیشن اف ا لاس فنکشن ایز ان اپٹیمائزیشن پرابلم فار فار لینیئر ریگریشن وی آلسو ڈرائیوڈ انالیٹیکل سولوشن and to find uh, an optimal uh, weights, optimal coefficients for which the loss function is minimized. Uh, in this video, we will focus on the so-called gradient descent algorithm. So the algorithm is, is very, very basic uh, and it, it is very foundational, uh, but it is very widely used uh, in a lot of machine learning algorithms or in a, for solving an optimization problem. Okay, let's talk about this gradient descent algorithm. So I will start with uh, uh, a quick introduction about optimization problems. Uh, how do we formulate an optimization problem? And then we'll move towards uh, the gradient descent. Okay, what is optimization? Optimization refers to finding optimal value of your unknown variables under some constraints on the variables. Okay. Let me add more explanation. What do you mean by optimal value? Optimal value, the value of your variable for which your loss function or your objective function is maximized or minimized. What are constraints? So constraints, so constraints that restrict the domain of our variable. And, and usually we define these constraints with the help of equality functions or inequality constraint, inequality functions by imposing some inequality constraints or equality constraints on the functions. So when you, when you impose equality constraints or inequality constraints uh, on a function of the variable, so this is kind of, so you want to find the variable for which these constraints are satisfied, right? So you are restricting the domain of your variable. Uh, all optimization problem uh, uh, in general, uh, we can formulate in this way. If we minimize uh, a function f naught of theta, uh, which we refer to as an objective function. Uh, for example, this could be uh, a loss function in our least square problem. In our least square, we wanted to minimize uh, norm of square of norm of the error and we want to find this theta so this could this was our objective function in least squares so we want to minimize f naught of theta uh, we want to find set of theta for which f naught of theta is minimized subject to uh, f i of theta less than or equal to zero and we have m number of such functions and we have h j of theta is equal to zero uh, we have p number of such such constraints so we have M number of inequality constraint functions and we have P number of equality constraint functions. And these functions, as I said earlier, they restrict the domain of our variable because uh, I need to find a theta for which these constraints are satisfied. It, uh, a simple example would be uh, if you have an inequality constraint in which you require uh, theta to be greater than or equal to zero, right? Or each theta, theta is a vector, each component is to be greater than or equal to zero. So this is an inequality constraint. And you can write in this form by, by, by writing it as minus theta is less than or equal to zero, right? So this is an inequality constraint that you have restricted the domain of your variable. Previously, any component could be negative or positive, but now we require every component to be non-negative. Okay. Why are we studying optimization problem? Uh, we formulated minimization of a loss function for a linear regression problem as a minimization problem. Right? And we will see that various algorithms in machine learning uh, require us to solve an optimization problem we will formulate, uh, we will obtain the solution of uh, different machine learning algorithms by, uh, by formulating a minimization 
of a loss function as an optimization problem. So we have talked about uh, such one example, linear regression, and we will see very shortly uh, that how can we uh, uh, train a neural network uh, in which we minimize uh, the loss function, we minimize the error uh, by solving an optimization problem. Again, that's enough uh, introduction. What do we mean by optimization problem and how do we define an optimization problem? I assume uh, whenever you see the formulation like this, uh, you should be able to interpret it uh, very quickly. That uh, what, what is the interpretation of inequality constraint functions? Uh, uh, what are, uh, uh, what's the role of equality constraint functions? And uh, when, you, when you have F naught of theta, that is the function you want to minimize. Okay. Let's start with gradient descent. So to solve an optimization problem, uh, the gradient descent approach is the most commonly used method. Uh, it, it, is, it is best used uh, when the unknown variables cannot be determined analytically. And we will see very shortly that even for linear regression, we prefer to use gradient descent uh, because of uh, the reduced computational complexity. Uh, and yeah, we will define uh, that what is the cost, what is the computational cost for obtaining the solution analytically and what is the cost associated with the gradient descent. Right. Okay, uh, gradient descent uh, by definition, it's an iterative algorithm. It initially choose uh, the coefficients, uh, say you, you choose the coefficients to be all zeros and then we iteratively update the coefficients in the direction of gradient descent. Uh, okay, I will talk about this. What do you mean by steepest descent very shortly? Okay. So we initially we choose some coefficients, right? And then we keep on updating those coefficients in such a way that you move towards uh, either local minima or global minima. Uh, and you keep on iterating until the convergence is reached. Uh, and you can define convergence in a way uh, whether uh, you have reached the local minima or, or the error is not reducing further. Or the loss function is not being minimized uh, further. And uh, when we do these updates, we ensure that the new coefficients are better than the previous coefficients. Okay, let me explain this with the help of simple uh, one dimensional loss function, right? So you have only one variable theta, which you want to determine, and you have this very, very smooth loss function. Okay. So we assume that uh, we choose this initial theta, right? And uh, we move towards this yellow point, right? So yellow point is your optimal theta for which the loss function is minimized, right? So our goal is to reach this yellow point, right? And we start from this uh, initial theta. And if you see, I have taken these steps to reach these theta. So this is called the learning step. So you move from your initial theta towards the optimal theta by taking out this, these learning steps, right? If I somehow know that when started from here, I should move in this direction. So if I know that I need to move in this direction, uh, uh, I, I, I can move towards uh, my, my optimal theta point. Okay, uh, let, let me revisit this again in a while. Uh, let's uh, first formulate uh, the gradient descent. Okay. Uh, we denote the loss function by L of theta, uh, and we assume that theta is in uh, d-dimensional space. Right? So what's the interpretation of partial derivative of loss function with respect to some component or some theta i? Right? So this partial derivative gives you rate of change in the loss function with respect to theta i. If this is, if this partial derivative is greater than zero, that means 
if you increase theta i, that is going to increase your loss function. If this partial derivative is less than zero, then increasing theta i would decrease loss function. Okay. Okay. Noting this, the loss function is decreased when you change theta such a way that you take into account this partial derivative, partial over partial theta, right? When partial over partial theta is greater than zero, you want to decrease theta i, right? When this is less than zero, you want to increase theta i so that the loss function is decreased. And with this update, we can achieve this, right? So if you have a theta i, right? And you update theta i in a way that you subtract alpha times uh, partial derivative at theta i, or partial derivative of the loss function with respect to theta i, right? So this will, so this will move theta i in a direction in which the loss function is decreased. Let me explain this with the help of same uh, loss function. <coughs> My apologies. Okay, so we take this initial theta i and uh, say, so you are here, right? And if I take a law derivative of this loss function with respect to theta i, what do I get? Right, so that is given by the tangent at this point and the slope of this line. So this the slope of this red line is partial error, L word partial. In fact, there is only one uh, theta you can write. So DL over, let me keep partial over partial theta. So what is slope here? The slope is negative. And you, now you know your optimal point is towards the right. So you want to add something to this, this theta. Right? So slope is negative. So if this quantity is negative here, and so th when this quantity is negative, so theta i or the next theta would be greater than the previous theta. Similarly, if you're here, right? Uh, again, the slope is negative and theta would be moved towards right. So the next theta would be towards the right of this theta. But the slope has decreased and you might have observed that uh, the step size is also shrinking as you move towards optimal point because this partial L over partial theta is reducing. So I'm not changing alpha here. Right? I will talk about alpha shortly. So alpha is some say some num positive number. Similarly, if you start from here, the slope here is is positive, and you want to reduce theta. You want to move theta towards the left. So if, the, if partial level partial theta is positive, so next theta would be less than the previous theta. Right? So you move towards left. I hope this is clear. This, this is this is very, very basic. So, so this concept is a sense of gradient descent that we take a step size in the direction of negative of the derivative, in the direction of steepest descent. Right? So we follow a steepest descent direction uh, while updating uh, my coefficients, my, my uh, so my variable theta. Right? Okay. So what is the role of alpha here? Uh, we refer to alpha as a step size or uh, we call it learning rate. When alpha is too small, so what's the consequence? You will take smaller steps, but eventually you will reach the yellow point. But it will, it will take more iterations to reach the yellow point. So when alpha is too small, 
we can say gradient descent can be slow. When the alpha is very large, what's going to happen? So you start from this point, right? And you start taking a step size reach here. If you take a very large step size, right? So you, you know that your step size is in the right direction. But if you take a very large alpha such that you reach here, right? And next type, you come back, come back. Eventually you converge. But if you take a very large alpha, such that you go beyond this point somewhere here. Then very large alpha can in fact overshoot the minimum. Right? And there's a possibility that the algorithm uh, may fail to converge. So algorithm won't converge because every time you take a very large step size and you keep on diverging. Instead of moving towards yellow point, you're moving, you start moving away from the yellow point. I will try to demonstrate this with the help of one demo very shortly. Okay, but assume you got an idea uh, for now. The two large alpha gradient descent can overshoot the minimum and it may fail to converge. Okay. So uh, we have built uh, a basic intuition uh, about the gradient descent. Right? So now we move towards uh, defining algorithm or we, we, I, I will show you a pseudo code of this gradient descent algorithm, right? which is just a, a formulation of what we have discussed here. So overall algorithm is uh, start with some theta, some initial point, and you keep updating in such a way that the loss function is reduced in each, in each iteration and until we reach a minimum, right? So if I talk about pseudocode of this, we initialize, uh, take some initial point theta, that is an RD, and we repeat the following until the convergence is obtained. So each theta i is updated in each iteration uh, by subtracting the learning rate times the partial derivative with respect to theta. And you do you do same for each component. So this can be equivalently written as in the form of gradient uh, we defined in the, in, in the previous video that theta is theta minus alpha and this quantity is a uh, gradient in fact, you have stacked all the partial derivatives in this in this gradient. So it's a vector of the same size as theta, and you have uh, uh, indexed all the partial derivatives in this in this gradient. Okay. Uh, before we move forward, uh, an important up in, in, an important note, an important point that you should, in this step we should simultaneous update. It's, it simply means that uh, when you keep on updating say theta one, right? So you have updated theta one and now you, when you move towards updating theta two, you should not use the previous value, the current value of theta one in updating theta two. So for updating theta two, if theta two if the update of theta two depends on theta one, you must use the previous value of theta one, right? So that is this is a concept of simultaneous update, right? You simultaneously update all d thetas, theta theta one, theta two, theta three, and so on and so forth, theta d. Okay, so I will revisit this uh, again. Convergence and step size. We stop updating theta if either the gradient is zero or the difference between the loss function in successive iterations is less than some threshold, right? So you keep on iterating and if the decrease in the loss function over successive iterations is less than some threshold, 
So that that can be your stopping criterion. Or another stopping criterion could be uh, when the gradient is equal to zero. So uh, let me also comment on this alpha. So we can have a constant step size or learning rate, or we can have uh, we can have it adaptive on each iteration. Uh, typical values of this alpha are 0 0.01, 0 0.05, or it can be even smaller, 0 0.01. Even if you keep uh, a fixed alpha, a fixed rate, uh, the algorithm converges uh, due to the automatic smaller step size near the optimal solution. So when you reach the optimal solution, right? So algorithm won't oscillate. Right. So you have kept alpha constant. Uh, if you fear that uh, because you want very small step size when you reach your local minima, your global minima, so that you don't miss your minima. But the gradient itself is decreasing to zero right? when you reach the global minima or local minima. It, so that will make uh, the smaller step size near the optimal solution. Okay. So I assume uh, uh, you had you have developed an understanding, a basic level understanding of gradient descent, right? So the idea is very very simple. So it's an iterative algorithm. You keep on updating your coefficients, your unknown variables, in the direction of steepest descent, in the direction of negative of your gradient. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about. Uh, this gradient descent for a linear regression case. Uh, for linear regression, uh, we minimize uh, this loss function. So I have added this uh, n here. So previously, when we obtained, when we derived analytical solution, we did not use this n. But if you go back, and now you're trained enough, if you go back and include this n, you will see that you, you you get the exact same solution because this n is just a constant here right but uh, uh, when we talk about gradient descent we take into account this n and similarly this factor one over two uh, is for mathematical convenience okay so we have this loss function for a linear regression and uh, first we take a single feature regression uh, just to understand the concept so we assume that uh, our input is a scalar. That means each of these xi is, is equal to xi. Uh, for such a case, we only have two coefficients, two unknown variables that we want to determine by minimizing a loss function, right? So theta naught bias and theta one that is associated with the scalar input x, right? This is my loss function. Uh, in order to find the update, what do I need? I need to do, I need to find out the positive derivatives of the loss function with respect to theta naught and respect to theta one. Okay, let's define the, the derivative with respect to theta naught. When you take derivative with respect to theta naught, so you get two. Two would be cancelled with this this two here. And you're only left with one over n summation. So this term, theta naught plus theta one x minus y i times derivative of this term with respect to theta naught. So this is independent of theta naught. This would go to zero. This will also go to zero, and this will become one. So partial derivative of the loss function with respect to theta naught would be given by this. Right. Similarly, partial derivative of the loss function with respect to theta one, that would be, again, uh, one over two n summation, two times this term, so two would cancel with, uh, so would cancel with this two times the partial derivative of this quantity, so this term, with respect to theta one. And when you take derivative with respect to theta one, you only get xi. So this is the partial derivative of the loss function with respect to theta one. Okay. 
So we have we have computed partial derivatives. We have in fact formulated partial derivatives, and and this, to find these partial derivatives, what do you need? You need theta naught, you need theta one, you need inputs, right? In fact, so this quantity. What is this quantity? This quantity is your prediction, right? By your model, this is your prediction, and this y i is your true label, and similarly x i is your input. So, so you have all of this, in, all of uh, this in your data. So once you have, once you compute these partial derivatives using these expressions, uh, we can have gradient descent. So we repeat until convergence, uh, and we keep on updating theta naught and theta one using partial derivatives. Okay, let me again talk about uh, the concept of simultaneous update. If you see here, uh, when you want to update theta one, right, you also need theta naught. But when you are in this iteration, when you're in, 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 in any iteration, you have already updated, if you're updating sequentially, right? Theta naught and theta one. Right? So when you move, when you come towards updating theta one, you had already updated theta naught, but you must not use the updated value of theta naught while updating theta one, right? So that's the concept of simultaneous update. To simultaneously update theta naught, theta one, using the previous values of theta naught and theta one. Okay, so that one. So this is the gradient descent for a single feature regression case. Okay, let's visualize this. Uh, let me give you a demo and see uh, how do we take these steps uh, yeah, for a, for a very very simple loss function. Okay. So I'm I'm going to take uh, a very simple loss function. So a loss function is a function of theta naught. Theta naught is here and theta one is here, right? And uh, if you can observe, you want to find theta naught and theta one for which the loss function is minimized. In this example, for theta naught is equal to zero and theta one is equal to zero, the loss function is minimized. Uh, sometimes uh, it's hard to visualize this surface plot, um, and uh, we can we can have this surface plot uh, information in the surface plot in, with the help of contours. Right? So this is the contour plot. Uh, if you have seen this for the first time, uh, let me try to explain this. Uh, okay, what is the contour plot? Contour plot is a plot of uh, level curves or level surfaces, in fact, level surfaces uh, of your three-dimensional plot. So if I take, I say I value 20 here, right? And I take a plane and I slice my curve with this 20, right? So I will get different values of theta naught and theta one because this uh, plane where z is equal to 20 would be intersecting with my function at different values right so, and if so this line this this so this contour right is labeled with 20 it means so for all of these values of theta naught and theta one right? so each point on this contour represent a different value of theta naught and theta one but for each of these value the value of the loss function is equal to 20. Similarly, uh, so this contour corresponds to all theta naught, theta one, for which the loss function is equal to 40. <coughs> right? uh, and similarly, you can have other contour lines. If you see, we have, we have taken a uniform step when you move along the z-axis, 
20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Right. And uh, you can also note the spacing between the contour lines. Right. So as you move away from this center, the contour lines are, the spacing between the contour lines is decreasing. Because, but you're taking the Gini home steps along Z, but the function is changing rapidly. Right. So for, for large values of Z. Uh, and therefore, you, the spacing between the contour lines is decreasing. Okay, so let me give you a demo uh, for different values of alpha. Right, so we will take some random point, uh, uh, some random values for theta naught and theta one, and we will apply gradient descent, and we will see uh, whether we can converge to our this point. So our goal is this center, right? Similarly, this center, which you cannot see here, right? Okay, let's, let's do it. Uh, let's run gradient descent for alpha is equal to 0 0.05, 0 0.2, 0 0.8, and one. So let me start with MATLAB. This is my surface plot, and this is my contour plot, right? And I'm starting from this point. Right? So because I'm, I'm, I'm generating this randomly, so you might see uh, the different point, different times. Okay, so hang on. Uh, okay. But uh, probably I can move this one to one right. And if I want to see the value of alpha, I have taken so alpha is 0 0.05, right? So this is my surface plot. This is my contour plot. And now I'm going to run, uh, hang on, over different iterations, right? So alpha is equal to 0 0.05. So if I run this, so I, I've run this for 25 iterations, right? or maybe I think I can run it for 200 iterations, right? Uh, or I will stop when uh, when the 200 iterations complete or when, or if my loss function is decreased to uh, say a very, very small value. So if I run this, so these are the iterations of my gradient descent. So if you see, this red point is moving towards in the direction of steepest, in the direction of negative of the gradient. And okay, what's happening here? So I'm plotting the values of the coefficients, the updates, I'm getting a iteration. I know my optimal point is theta naught is equal to zero and theta one is equal to zero. And if you see here, these values are moving towards uh, the optimal point. As I have taken alpha constant, so moving towards this. And I have reached uh, these values very near to zero when after 200 iterations. Okay, I hope this is clear, right? Okay, let me change alpha and uh, we run this for now. Uh, okay, we take alpha is equal to 0 0.2 and see what happens. This is my contour, this is my surface plot. And I take alpha as point two. And if I run this. Okay, so this is my random point, initial guess, right? So I'm taking initial guess randomly between minus 10 and 10, uh, and similarly for theta one, right? So this is my initial guess. And if I start running for alpha is equal to, alpha is 0 0.2. And if I start running for different iterations, so let me take point. Okay, so because alpha is 0 0.2, so now I'm moving towards my threshold, which is I have kept to the minus, minus four. So, 
Oh, okay. So I have reached in only 25 iterations. So I ran algorithm for 200 iterations, but my algorithm converges, my algorithm reaches the threshold of tensor minus four in only 25 iterations, right? Because I have taken alpha is equal to 0.2, right? Which is better than 0.05. Okay, let's run for different values of alpha, right? Let's say you want to run for alpha is equal to 0.8. And I will run very slowly this time. Surface plot, contour plot. Um, I take alpha is equal to 0.8. And if I regenerate this, So I will regenerate because I don't like this point. Uh, let me regenerate. Yeah, okay, I'm very far from my optimal point. Right? And take alpha equal to 0.8 and see what happens. Right? So let me increase the delay time by say 0.8 seconds. And if I run this, maybe I can keep it in definite pause. So after first iteration, after first update, so my initial theta is, is this red point. In first update, I get this. Yeah, uh, yeah I need to pass key. Uh, hang on. Yeah. So I start from this point and I have read this point out of a iteration, right? So I'm on a hopping, hopping between positive and negative, right? Next iteration, I get here. Next, I get here. And then, so I'm, I'm moving, so oscillating, right? But I'm still converging, right? And if I keep going, eventually in 26 iterations, so again, with alpha is equal to 0.8, I have converged to the origin, converged to the solution. Okay. Let's take alpha is equal to say one. See what happens. Let me generate the plots again. I start from this point and see what happens. When I keep on running over multiple iterations, so I'm hopping between these two points. I start from here and I can, I, uh, so next iteration here, 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 and so on and so forth. So I'm not converging. Right? So if you see the coefficients, positive, negative, positive, negative, the same value, they're not, convert, they're not being updated, right? So they're oscillating, right? Okay, let's take, alpha is equal to more greater than one. If I take alpha is equal to 1.2 and see what happens. Uh, I should stop this one for... Okay, if I run this for alpha is equal to 1.2 and say, okay, I run it for 1.1 and see what happens. And let me run for only 25 iterations. So this is uh, my starting point and see what happens over iterations. See, you were diverging, right? We start from here, you reach here, and right? so the algorithm is not converging, it's in fact, it's moving away from the optimal solution. Right? Okay, I think I assume you, you get an idea, right? Uh, so, this was a demonstration of gradient descent. Uh, I hope uh, now you have a good understanding of, of uh, surface plot, contour plot, and uh, when you see a curve, a uh, figure, something like this, how do you interpret this? That's how is your algorithm converging around the contour plot and reaches towards the optimal solution. Okay. Okay. So we we come back. 
So we have uh, analyzed a linear regression case uh, for a single feature problem. Let's talk about linear regression when we have multiple features. So for multiple feature regression, we have X uh, and X is in RD in a d-dimensional space. We have d number of features and that's how we define the loss function, right? Nothing new. We define partial derivative with respect to return naught. So now you're an expert now. Now you can find partial derivative of the loss function with respect to return naught is this. If I asked you to find partial derivative with respect to say some theta j, can you find it? Can you pause this video and find it for me? Uh, what do you get? You must have uh, formulated like this. A partial derivative loss function with respect to theta j would be, yeah, one over n, the term which is here, and so this two would cancel with this two. This two would cancel with this two when you take derivative. Okay, why am I meeting this term? I want to take derivative of this with respect to theta j, right? So theta naught is independent of theta j, so this would be zero. Y i becomes zero. So theta transpose x i, what is this? Theta one, x i first component plus, okay, this is the first component, right? I am using these brackets plus theta two, x i second component and so on and so forth. When you take derivative with respect to theta j, all of these terms would vanish except for the jth component. You can take derivative with respect to theta j. That's why you get this term. And uh, so this quantity represents uh, uh, the, uh, hang on, it should be jth component of x i. I will update in the notes. Okay. So we have partial derivatives. We can define gradient descent. Repeat until convergence and you keep on updating this. And again, we can note that we want to have simultaneous updates of each of the component of uh, theta. Right. Okay, so we have uh, covered gradient descent for a single feature regression for a multiple feature regression. And you are trained now um, to implement gradient descent, to compute these partial derivatives uh, and uh, implement an algorithm. Right. Okay, a couple of notes. Uh, as we have taken all endpoints for updating at each step. Uh, so this uh, variant of gradient descent or what we've discussed here uh, is, ref is also referred to as a batch gradient descent. So batch means you're taking all samples, uh, all uh, endpoints uh, for updating at each step. Right? So this is because of this summation because I have taken all the steps. I have taken all the samples in updating theta at each iteration. That's why we refer to this as, this variant of gradient descent as batch gradient descent. Uh, let me also introduce you, introduce you to the term epoch, uh, E-P-O-C-H. This referred to one sweep of all the points in the data set. So, in, in, in the variant of gradient descent we discussed here, iteration is same as epoch, as we have taken all the points at each step. So epoch, epoch is one sweep that when, when you're done with uh, taking into account all the points in your data set, that is one epoch. So, but uh, you, you you will get used to this term, right? Uh, 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 when we when we keep on using this in, in different contexts. But here, epoch is same as iteration. Uh, we prefer uh, to use gradient descent 
for linear regression, despite the fact that we have an optimal solution, which we can compute analytically. Why? The reason is gradient descent is, is very, very easy to implement. In fact, uh, is easy to implement, sorry, than the analytical solution and gradient descent is computationally efficient. What do we mean by this? So for a closed form of an analytical solution, we are required to solve this problem. So we are required to compute this solution. What is the computational complexity to compute this? What's the size of X transpose X? D, D times D, where D is the number of features, right? So for a matrix of size D cross D, if you want to invert it, the computational complexity would be of the order D cube, right? Uh, by the way, X transpose Y would be simply uh, N times D because Y has a size N and you have uh, X transpose would be D cross N. So X transpose Y is N D, uh, but we, if we assume that D is greater than N, so D Q would dominate. So the computation complexity for direct solution of a matrix inversion would be of the order D Q. But what is, the what is the complexity of gradient descent? So at each step, we compute partial derivatives and we have batch, batch gradient descent. That means we take all points. We have N samples at each, each update and we have D features. So computational complexity of each update of gradient descent would be of the power n times t. So of the order n times t. Okay. And obviously uh, order n times d is better than uh, of the order, order d cube when d is, uh, when you have large uh, number of features. Right. But the downside of gradient descent is, okay, the, the so-called batch gradient descent is, that we have taken all endpoints for updating at each step. We could use a subset of all the endpoints to approximate or to compute an estimate of the gradient. Or we could, or we could use just one randomly chosen point. This is in fact a stochastic gradient descent. For large data sets, uh, we use stochastic gradient descent that selects one random point in each iteration to update the coefficients. We will talk about uh, this stochastic gradient descent uh, in the next video. We stop here uh, and we will continue in the next video. Thank you, Alaphis.